By the 13th century, armour had evolved and armourers had developed new pieces. The primary form of protection was still mail and padding and this knight of around 1250 begins by putting on a pair of male leggings known as chausses. The Bayo tapestry shows that male leggings were coming into the use at the end of the 11th century, but by the mid 12th century they were in common usage. These covered his legs from thigh to ankle and later pairs also extended to cover the foot. Some probably had leather soles, so that separate boots were not needed. The chausses were presumably fastened to a belt around the waist and held in place by laces known as points, which passed through the male at the ankle and the knee. Some illustrations show another type of chausse that was laced up the back from ankle to thigh. Now once the chausses were secured, the knight would put on his gambeson. This is a thickly padded garment designed to give protection against crushing blows. It would be followed by the male shirt. Because of the additional leg protection, the male shirt did not need to be as long as in previous centuries, and our knight is wearing a shorter version known as a haubergeon. And by now, both the gambeson and the haubergeon have full-length sleeves, with the male extending to form a mitten over the hand. The soft leather palm of the mitten is slashed, enabling the wearer to remove his hand without having to take the whole garment off. And, like the chausses, the sleeves are secured in place by points, passing through the male at the wrist and elbow. Although mail was still the main type of armour for a knight, it was vulnerable to certain types of attack. A thrust from a lance or a sword could burst through those links, whilst heavy concussive blows from maces or axes could shatter the bones beneath. And arrows, of course, were always a major threat. Armourers looked at ways of increasing the protection of armour and how it could provide it. And one solution was to create rigid defences, such as the coat of plates. This was a series of overlapping iron plates riveted to a fabric cover, in this case leather. It was put on over the head and buckled up at the back, and provided an additional layer of defence over the mail and padding. Pieces of rigid armour made out of metal or leather were also developed to cover the arms and the legs. Once the body armour was in place, the knight would put on a surcoat, displaying his heraldic coat of arms and his sword belt would be buckled over it. The sword is still of the single-handed slashing type. It would be followed by an arming cap and then the coif of mail. This one is equipped with a flap or ventail, which is laced at either side and drawn up to protect the neck and lower face. were several different types of helmet to choose from. In this case, the knight is wearing a great helm, which completely covers his head. Although this offers very good protection, it leaves only narrow slits and holes to see and breathe through. Due to the added protection to the legs provided by the chausses, the shield no longer needed to be as large, and the old kite shape was discarded in favour of a smaller, lighter version known as a heater shield. <laughs>